Games to you. Welcome back. We're again picking up where we left off in the last video. We've already showed you the synchro spawners. They're over here. One, two, three. They're set up to spawn things at certain times or when you destroy everything like elimination waves. And they're spawned by the settings that you set down here, the global waves in the level settings prefab. We're going to go ahead and turn off use global waves because triggered spawners do not use these. Triggered spawners they will spawn their waves according to when events happen, like if something gets despawned or something becomes visible or you enter a trigger. We're going to use this hearse object in the scene and we're going to make it a triggered spawner that spawns when you collide with it, when the player collides with it. So first we look at the collider, that's good, but for a collision to happen, both objects need to have a rigid body. One of them needs to be gravity, but the player's gravity, so we can turn this one off. Then we add the triggered spawner script. In the event to activate box, just drop down actually, you will see all the events that you can use to trigger the event. We're going to pick on collision. So this looks like the same settings you've seen before on the synchro spawners. Let's go ahead and tell it what to spawn. Let's check out if that works. Let's go collide with it. Whoa, it made a whole bunch of them. That's because it's colliding every single frame. That's how. That's what Unity's doing. So we're going to use the re-trigger limit event and say that it can only happen at the most every one second. Only spawn a wave every one second. Let's try it again. Now you'll notice it keeps spawning when I walked away. That's because it's colliding with the other enemy. The enemy is hitting the hearse and making another one. So let's do a layer filter. The player's layer is default. Let's change it so you have to hit default and it'll spawn, not any other layer. So it's still spawning, one a second at the most. But it's not continuing to spawn when I walk away, that's good. Now we're going to make another triggered spawner, and we're going to make it spawn something when it becomes visible. We're going to use this spinning top object. Notice it's really close to you in the scene, so actually it's just going to spawn its wave when the scene starts. So this time we'll pick Visible. We're using the Visible event to spawn monsters, but it could spawn projectiles, you know, weapons that an enemy is throwing at you, or loot for you to pick up. We'll spawn two of this. And we'll make it so it repeats the wave, let's say, three times. And each time it'll add one more to how many it's spawning, and it'll take one second between. So let's take a look. We should get two, and then three, and then four. That's right. I noticed a problem with the pooling here. Take a look down here. The zombie bears are not getting despawned. They are disappearing from the pool. Watch there as they become highlighted and disappear. What's going on? That's not pooling. Well, it's because of a script that's used in this Unity project. It's actually calling destroy on the object. Well, that won't be able to pool. Let's get rid of that and replace that with a tiny amount of code to use pool boss. Note that you will not need to do this if you use the killable class, which our next video will be about, because it automatically, when the object takes enough damage, it'll automatically despawn into pool boss. But this is a script that's been written beforehand by Unity. So we're going to wait for two seconds, like the old code. Let's call the code routine here. Wait for two seconds, and then poolboss.despawn, just pass in the transform component of the object, and that's it. Let's see if it works now. Good, looks like they're getting despawned. They're not disappearing from the pool boss hierarchy there.
Now that we have things despawning correctly, let's show you how to make things spawn when an object despawns. And that's pretty cool, like loot or additional enemies when you destroy one enemy, which is what we're going to do. Let's add a triggered spawner to the zombie bear. For the on despawned event, we will spawn two zombie bunnies every time you destroy a zombie bear. That should be pretty difficult. Zombie bunnies are spawned, but I can't see them. Ah, they are under the floor, which is when the other despawns. So, change the Y coordinate to zero, specifically, when it spawns each one. And there they are. Yes, it does wait for the full two seconds when the guy despawns, which is after he's fallen through the floor for a while. So that's pretty cool. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more videos soon. Reach us on the forums.